Sonny Mayer, and I have the privilege to give this the offering this evening. We all know everything belongs to God, right? So when we give our tithes, we are giving back what already belongs to God. In Psalms 50, 12 through 14, this truth is brought out. And it says, If I were hungry, I would not tell thee. For the Lord is my for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the unto the most high. What God is telling us is everything belongs to him, Amen. even our tithes and offerings. Amen. Amen. He could take it if he wanted, but he doesn't because he wants us to offer it to him. Amen. Now, the reason I give is to obey God's word and to grow the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, I close with this question. Will you give this evening? Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. I pray that you put your heads of protection on each and every one of us in this house, Lord. I pray you put your hands over the, uh, the sermon today, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
So Sister Naomi has this row right here. Brother Adrian has this row. Sister Bricia has this row. Um, Sister Minnie in this one. We have Sister Vanessa on this one and her husband Larry. And then this one we have Sister Felicia and Brother Tony. Now this one I did not have people to, uh, to do. So let's make sure our back row right here, our back rows. If those that are passing out in the back could go ahead and get that. So. Um, while we're passing out the raffle tickets, we're going to go ahead and do a few, um, a few, uh, those that are already in there, we're going to go ahead and draw a couple names, okay, for right now. But, uh, DJ Michael, if you could get some music on for us, that would be amazing, okay, thank you. Alright, so at this time, um, I'm going to go ahead and pick a couple kids, yeah, would you like to pick a ticket for me, please? Stop looking, yes. Okay, go ahead and read it Okay, I'm gonna read that back for you, thank you. Alright, so that the, the number is one nine three eight four three six. 
You the winners? You got it? Was that anybody's ticket? Did anybody respond? Okay. Who got, who got this oh, number? Uh, that was... One, nine, three, eight, four, three, six. One, one. Okay, Joanna's going to read our next one here. One, nine, three, eight, three, seven, one. One, nine, three, eight, three, seven, one. Oh, right here? You got a winner back there? Come on Okay, up. come on up, Let's give it up for our winner tonight. All right, so you are welcome to pick one prize from our table right here. And then, does everybody have a solo cup? Want to do another number real quick? Another round for you. Two round for Can somebody help me get the back row back here? We need solo cups in this last row. All right, the next number is 1938406. No winners? One, nine, three, eight, four, zero, six. Oh, we got a winner. Come on down. Or do we not have enough cups? Okay, I'm gonna explain the rules to this game. Okay, so here's how you guys, this is an icebreaker, so it's an all play. If you did not get a, uh, a solo cup yet, raise your hand and we will make sure that you get one, okay? So back here, I see some hands back there that need some solo cups. So what you're going to do is your section. So for example, this is section one, okay? So one, two, three, four, five. That is five rows, okay? So this one too. One, two, three, four, five. We'll go up to row six on that way. What you're going to do is within your section, you guys are going to put your solo cup on your head while you're standing up. Okay, everybody stand up. We'll do a trial run, okay? Let's try this. So, because I'm short and I can't see, I'm going to come up right here, okay? So, you're going to put it face down. Face it down on your head. The object is to pick it off of the people in your section without dropping your solo cup. If your solo cup drops, you are out. If you still have your solo cup on and the rest of your section does not, you are the winner of your section. Do you guys understand the rule? So, these are the rules. I'll repeat them one more time, okay?
So in this section, like we have like how many more? We got one, two, three, four. So here we go. The game is going to be live now. So we're going to have seven winners. That was a little trial. That was, you know, two parties. Now we're playing for real. Ready? Set. Everyone's ready? Hold on. I see some dropping. I will get five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Game on. You cannot hold on to her. I see them drop. One take you off. That is it. That is it. Okay. All right. You gotta be honest with your last one. Be honest with your last one. We're holding on to your cups, guys. We're holding on to your cups. So this section we have three, or we have two left. We have two left right here. Who's the last one right here on this section? Miss uh, Walls. We got Miss Walls, first winner. We got six more. Okay, Leonard, your family? Yes. And then, let's see, I saw one more 
your family over here? Brielle, do you want to do it? Okay, one adult, one adult and three kids for her. So you got to bring your family there. Okay. Who else? Hold on, hold on. But one? We have four families, so that's four families. Okay. All right, Linda, you're going to come over here to this, this section right here. I think we have four families, guys. Sorry. Two, three, three. Sister Crystal, you guys are going to come over here. Okay, and then uh, Sister Julie, you'll be over there. That'll be your section. So, right here on this section, oh, you know what? While they're getting ready, go ahead. Sister Shayla is going to go ahead and pull out two prizes. Okay, guys, ticket number is 1938515. Yeah! Oh! 1938515. Anybody? Yeah. Going once, going twice. Okay. 
Turn it. If you get tagged, you have to return the treasure. Okay? So, if you get tagged, you have to do... Okay, are you ready? Huh? Yeah, we should be a little bit bigger, I think. The... Red. Red. Okay, hold on, guys. We gotta make this. Back up, Zach, just a bit. So you gotta be quick, you gotta be quick. Alright, ready? ready? Five, four, three, two, one, go! If you get tired, you have to go back and do five jumping jacks. Tag. Put your tag. treasure back. Put your treasure back. Okay, we have four. Six. Oh, okay. That's 
15. All right, and Sister Wendy's had six as well. So we're going to go ahead and give it to Crystal's family this morning. Thank you. Guys. You guys get to keep your candies. They get a $25 Chick-fil-A. Okay, so let's give it up. Thank you guys all for playing. All right, and lastly, guys, we have one more thing. If you guys can all return to your seats and look under your seats, there is a number on an 8 by 10. Look under your seats, please. Can you guys, everybody, look under your seats? Huh? Yeah. No, you keep it. You guys can keep it. Crystal, that was yours, yes. Look under yours. Okay, is that... What, Sunny, what's your brother's name? Huh? Samuel, you are the winner of the $25 McDonald's gift card. for worship, I just want to share just a few moments today, and I want to minister something today just real quickly, and I tell this little sermon today, put your house in order, and, and, and how many of us, God's people, we have to pay attention to our children and also to our families, and the Bible says these words in 2 Kings chapter 20 verse 1, it reads, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said, Thus saith the Lord, set your house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. And I just want to pray. Father, I just come before you, Lord. And God, I ask you, Lord God, today that you would be magnified, and God, that you would be glorified. And I ask you, Lord God, today, God, that we would understand, Father, what it is, God, that you're trying to tell us through your word, God. As I decrease, God, I pray that you increase, God, that you would be glorified. And God, we give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. And everybody believing, God, in the name of Jesus, saying amen. And amen today. You know, I just want to just speak for a few moments today. And I want us to know that when you look at our text today, our children, our families are very, very important. This is a biblical phrase, and this phrase was spoken to um, Hezekiah, which was the king of Israel, but it was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. And the prophet Isaiah looked at Isaiah and said, listen, you need to understand something. You need to put your house in order because you are going to die. And I want you to know today that what does this mean to put your house in order? To put your house in order means resolve your own personal problems or business affairs. 
It's often used as, as an advice or warning to someone who needs to improve or correct the way they do things or accomplish things or not to let things slide or let things be the way they are. It's a warning though to correct things that are wrong, to make things that are right before something begins to be destroyed or something begins to self-destruct. And what I wanted to say today as we bring this to a close today, I want us to know today this portrait of scripture, Hezekiah is sick. And, and Isaiah the prophet comes up to Hezekiah and he says, listen, God wants you to know that you're going to go home. God wants to let you know the sickness that you have, God is using that. That's the tool to take you home and you're going to die. And it was right there that when Hezekiah heard those words, he says, you're going to die by a sickness that God allowed you to get. And you're no longer be able to live on this earth, but God's going to take you home. Then Isaiah the prophet looks at Hezekiah and says, listen, what you need to do is you need to pray and you need to cry out to God. And I want you to think about what I'm saying today because what Hezekiah did is once he got that news to put his house in order, he began to look up to God and he began to cry. He began to realize there's a lot of things that I did not do that I should have done. And what they're going to do when you read the rest of the scripture, the Bible says Isaiah tells him to go cry out, to go pray and to get a hold of God. As soon as he did that, the Bible says he began to fall on the ground and cry. And then God spoke to Isaiah the prophet and he said these words, Go tell Hezekiah that I have heard his prayer. Go tell Hezekiah that I'm giving him 15 more years because he cried out and because he asked and he asked me to help him. And I want to say today, you guys, that this portion of scripture is amazing. And sometimes you hear the, the phrase, put your house in order. And what I wanted to share with you today and just share something that's very, very important today is that we need to do the same thing in our lives today. If God was to tell any of us today, listen, put your house in order. Because the day you are going to die, or today you're going to go home. And I say this to you guys today because the last part of the service I want you to understand. I say this because have we ever thought about our lives today? Have we ever thought about what we're building? And it was right there that Hezekiah heard those words that God told Hezekiah, I'm going to use a sickness that's going to take you home and you are going to die. So I need you to go home and put your house in order before I take you. Now I say that to say this to you guys today, is that what if God told us today that we're going to die and that God said, listen, I want you to put your house in order. And I want to give you some thoughts today. I want to ask you today, what are we building in our homes today? Because Hezekiah got a reality check and when God told him that, the Bible says he began to cry out to God and God added 15 more years to his life. But I want to ask you, what are we accomplishing today in our families? What, what, where is our family at in the things of God? Are my children saved? Are my children on their way to heaven? Because the really thing that matters in our lives is our children and our family. And do our children know God? Let me ask you a question, Father. That if you were to die today, do you know that your wife has the ability to raise your children up in the ways of the Lord? Or if you die today, would your family fall apart because the wife has not been trained or helped or encouraged to raise up those children? Let me ask you another question. For you husbands out there, if your wife was the if your if your if your wife was the God, would your husband be able to raise that family in the things of God? Would your fam would your wife be able to say, you know what? My husband gave me a legacy. My husband taught me to my children. Would your children begin to go on and serve the Lord? And I say that you guys today because we are living in a society today that your family needs you and your families need to know the presence of God in your life. Are you trying to be your friend, your, 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 your parents, your children's friend instead of being their parents? And what I want to encourage you today is that that day that when Hezekiah heard that, it did something to his heart. And it made him realize there's a lot of things that are undone in my household. There's a lot of things that I need to correct. So are you trying to be your children's friend? Because how many know they don't need a friend, they need a parent, they need a mom, they need a dad that's going to instruct them, help them, encourage them, and build them for the things of God. And I say that you guys today, are, you, are they being like the world? When you look at your kids, are they learning about God? Are they being like the world? Are we teaching them godliness? Are we teaching them to survive in this world? Have we, have, what have we taught them? What are we doing? Where are they going? Who are they? Are they struggling in their life? Are, what's taking place in their room at night? What's important to you and I today? And it's important for us to be involved with our children. 
It's important for you and I to say, listen, I want to know who you hang out with. I want to know who, who influences you. I want to know who you're influencing. I want to know who your friends are. I want to know if you're praying. I want to know if you're reading. I want to know today that if I was to die today, where is my family going today? And I say that, you guys, today with all my heart. Because tonight, I want to encourage you all today. I want to encourage you. Are your children involved? Do you, and we see our children day when you see them playing up here. They have gifts. They have talents. They have abilities. They want to serve. Remember what I said last week. We need to teach our kids why they have hope right now. And this is the age they have hope. This is the age that you can mold them. This is the age not to be their friend, but to be their mom and their dad. This is the age they need to know what's right, what's wrong. This is the age to build them in the things of God. This is the age you teach them. Listen, it's not about being cool. It's about being with Jesus. This is the age you teach them. Listen, the most important thing in life is Jesus. The most important thing in life is serving God, honoring God, and doing all that God's called us to do. And today, as they begin to play worship today, what I want to do today is something just a little bit different. And I want to encourage all of our parents today, all of our fathers, all of our mothers, and all of our grandfathers, that when we have an altar call today, that you would come up today. And that you, as a mother and as a father, would lay hands on your kids and plead the blood of Jesus. That you, as a mother and father, and as a grandmother, and as a grandfather, would say, you know what, I'm going to make sure because you know what, I want to put my house in order. I don't want to wait till I get a disease. I don't want to wait till cancer knocks on my door. I don't want to wait till something has to happen bad where I start to think about what life's really all about. I don't want to wait until a child runs away. But today, I want to pay attention. Today, I want to open my eyes. Today, I want to be a father. Today, I want to be a mother. Today, I want to teach my kids between right and between wrong. And you can imagine hearing the words of saying, listen, God says to put your house in order. That is a scary thing. And I thought about Hezekiah, no wonder why he cried, no wonder why he wept, and no wonder why he fell on the ground and said, God, forgive me, God, help me, God. God, I want to, God, to see my family know the things of God. And I'm not saying that God's going to tell you that tonight, but the scripture is powerful for us to understand that God said, listen, I am going to allow a sickness to take you home. But he began to change the mind of God. When he got on his knees and said, God, can you give me more time? God, can you forgive me, God? God, can you help me? So I want to encourage you guys that as people of God, as, a, as fathers and mothers today, that you will pay attention to your children, that you will look at what they look at, that you just won't let them stay in their rooms, that you would look at their lives and say, listen, I'm here, that you would be an example to them, that you just won't try to be a cool parent to them, but you'll be a parent that says, listen, that we're going to honor God. You know why mom and dad are married? You know why mom and dad got a job? You know why my mom and dad are, are excited? Because the goodness and the grace and the mercy of the living God in their life. Do your children know the Lord? Do they have have a relationship with God? Do they read the Word of God? Are they getting more like the world or are they becoming more and more like Christ? How many as God's people we got to stand for the glory and the honor of our God? So what am I saying? To say, you know what, to come and say, you know what, God? I'm going to huddle around my family. Then I need you in our lives. God, I want my eyes to be open. I want to know what's taking place in their lives. I want to know if they're struggling. I want to let them know they can come to me. I want to let them know they're being bullied. I want to let them know they're being pressured. I want to let them know, listen, if something's going on in your life, you can tell mom and dad will be right there by your side. And today, you guys, we serve an amazing God that we don't have to do things alone. But by the power of the living God, He helps to be great fathers and great mothers. It's being a father and mother easy. It's not. But this is where God comes alongside of us and says, listen, with me, all things are possible. With me, you can do great and mighty things. Our children need to be people today that they can look at their mom and dads more than anybody else in their lives. That the influence comes, I want to be like my dad. I want to be like my mom. I want to be like them because they're just like Jesus. 
so today I want to encourage you with all of your heart today as we have our heads bowed maybe you're here you're not saved you don't know Jesus the most important thing in life is Jesus Christ the most important thing in life and maybe you're here you're not saved you don't know God you don't know Jesus at all I want to tell you that he loves you I want to tell you that he cares for you I want to tell you that God has come to set us free that God has come to bring deliverance to our lives and maybe you're here you're not saved you don't know God or you never give your life to Jesus today can I introduce you to the Savior today can I introduce you to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings of our lives and that that's it when you lift your hand today don't walk out this place not saved don't walk out this place not knowing God you say I'm here I'm not saved I'm not born again I don't know the Lord you want to give your life to Christ will you lift your hand today God loves you and God sees you today anybody in this place you want to give your life to the Lord as we all stand today, I want you to know today this we've been putting on Take Over Tuesday, Kids Take Over Tuesday. But I want you to know, you guys, this is a serious thing. And I tell you what, I look at our children, I look what's going on in our society, I look what takes place inside of our schools, I look and turn on the news and see all the madness going on. Let me tell you some kids today need parents that are righteous, parents that are godly, parents that will teach. Parents that will let them know, listen, honey, listen, son, this is not right. You know, this is what the Bible says. But also parents that would tell their kids if you're struggling, if there's addictions coming your way, if pornography, pornography is knocking on your door. Hey, listen, if you're struggling with things you see on TV or the phone. Listen, if you're learning things that are wrong from kids, mom and dad are here to help you and to guide you. And today, my heart is a day, is that we would put our houses in order and say, God, help me to be a loving father. Help me to be a loving mother. And God, help my eyes to be open, my ears to be open, and my heart to be open to guide, to bless, and to move my family. What I'm saying today is that we would grab our kids and say, you know what, God, help us to be a family, God, that while we're living in this society, in this world, that we can touch our generation where we're at right now, today. Today. today I want to ask you if you want to bring your children, you want to come as a family and mom, and that you lay hands. And that sometimes you guys, we even have to tell our kids, forgive me for allowing things. Forgive me for not being the person I'm supposed to be doing. And to be honest with our children and say, listen, man, I want to make our family know the goodness and the grace of God. So today, let us lay hands on our kids. Let us bring our families up. Let us begin to plead the blood of Jesus over them. Let us begin to call upon the God of heaven and say, God, help us. God, strengthen us. God, help us that we can be the people of God. Father God, I ask you today for supernatural power. I ask you, Lord God, today that we call heaven today. And God, that you would pour out your spirit, God, upon our families. And God, I pray that you will empower every husband, every father, God. That you will empower every mother, God. That you will empower every wife, God. That you will empower every husband, God. That you would put an anointing upon them, God. And God, that you would bring, God, the, the children back to the Father's hearts, my God. And God, I pray for a love, God, and families, God, and marriages, God. That they would be living testimonies, God. Father God, I pray for children, God. God, that maybe their hearts are broken, God. I pray that you mend them, God, with their mothers, mend them with their fathers, God. I pray for every grandmother, every grandfather, God. We plead the blood of Jesus. Peace, bring healing, God, upon our families, God. Open our eyes, God. Strengthen us, my God. Move in your body way.
Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. You know what I want to say today is when you look at all of our kids, how I many of they did an amazing job in there? All of them did it from readers to ushers. And I just want you to know that, you know, we, we put this on for a reason. One reason is for our mission and role leaders can get their stuff together, amen, and get ready for a new year. But the other reason, too, that you can see that, that the kids have the gifts, the talents, and the abilities already in them. I was telling our role ranger teachers today that everybody in the entire world, most people come to God, literally out of 10 people, 8 of them come to the Lord before the age of 18 years old. Anybody that's ever saved in our world gets saved 10, I mean out of 10, every 8 out of 10 gets saved at the, before the age of 18 years old. But you know what that means today? It's at that young age they realize they need a savior. It's at that young age that their hearts are tender. It's at that young age that you can mold, you can shape, you can strengthen, and you can build. That's why they have first five, because the world knows first five, in those first five years, that molds a whole child's life. And you can teach a child the ways of God, not only from one to five years old, it builds their character for the rest of their life. Think about that with me today. For every 10 people that are saved, Eight of them get saved and are born again and introduced to Jesus before the age of 18 years old. How many of our children are very, very important all the time? So I want to encourage you today. We have our World Rangers. We have our Missionettes. And I want you to know that we have 10 classes going on on Tuesdays. On Sunday morning, we have over 20, 125 children. But let me tell you something. When it comes to World Rangers, children's ministries, when it comes to every single ministry, when it comes to you, our kids need to be poured into. And I want to encourage you parents today that you would look at your kids. And I know that we look at them, they're little kids. But they also have little hearts that need understanding. They also have little hearts that need to be taught. And I want you to know that something powerful happens that when you teach a child the ways of God. Because I tell you what, our kids, when they learn, they learn like sponges. This is why they pick up instruments. This will take us, if we started playing instruments right now, it would take us a long time, like 10 years probably. These are those kids come up and like, dum, 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 dum. they can just get down because there's no interruptions at all. But that's the beauty about our kids being young and us pouring into the things of God inside their life. So I want to encourage all of you, all you parents today, this is not a put down to you. This is not a put down to you. I want you to know that God wants to empower you as parents today. You as, how many of we thank God for our grandmas, our grandpas, our elders, amen. But I want you to know that God... God will give you power to help your children and to help you be a great mother and great father. So I just want to pray today for all of our mothers, all of our fathers, all of our grandfathers. Because I know it's tough being a parent sometimes. But I want to encourage you not to, not to fold. I want to encourage you not to stay behind. I want to encourage you to stand in the front and say, listen, as for me and my house, we're going to show the Lord. And I'm not going to be their friend. I'm going to be their parent. And they, they can come to me. I'm going to help them, build them. And I'm going to show them what a mom is, what a father is, and I'm going to lead them. I just want you to know we serve an amazing God, a great God today. I'm going to have Pastor Pat come up today. I'm going to have Pastor Steve come up today. I'm going to have Pastor Alfredo. Each one of them is going to say a prayer for all of our, all of our parents and also all of our grandparents. So Pastor Pat, Pastor Alfredo, you can do it in Espanol. God understands Spanish. Amen. I just want to get one mic. And then the kids are going to sing, this, sing that song one more time. We'll be closed. So I'm going to let Pastor Steve go first. Pastor Pat go second. Pastor Alfredo, if you could just say a blessing. Let me tell you some guys. As parents, man, we need, we need to have God in our lives. As parents, our children look up to us. Remember, those little kids. I see little kids. Where, where's, the, where's little Gilbert at? Come here, little Gilbert. I, I, just want, I just want to use you as a little example, okay? I'm going to put you up here, okay? I'm going to put you up here, okay? So I'm going to just pick you up, and I'm going to put you right up here. Look at this little face. Look at this little face. Have you seen this little boy smile? And you tell his dad, too. Uh, I go, man, that's what it's about, that little boy. It's about all these little faces up here. Look at these little innocent faces. I, 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 you look at it, uh, that's beautiful. But that's why, man, they're looking up to us. I mean, oh, that face right there and all these little faces up here speak volumes. They speak volumes. They speak volumes. So they, they need us, you guys, um, to be parents to them. And when they, need, they need us to help them. And we appreciate today. I'm just going to open the word of prayer. Just for God, we're going to pray God's blessing over you. God
God's favor over you. If your marriage is being attacked, let me tell you the reason why it's attacked. It's because God, the devil don't want you taking care of your children. He doesn't want you being an example. If you've been overwhelmed and you've been busy and you feel like pulling out your hair and you feel like you don't got time for nothing, let me tell you something, the devil's always trying to distract you. I was telling a couple of couples just the other day, the Bible says in the last days that Satan will come to wear out the saints. That word wear out means to come at you and just beat you, beat you, beat you, beat you. It's like you're not knocking down and you're still standing, but he's beating you. He just... He's, he's literally trying to drain and try to and try to take out everything out of the saints of God. The Bible says that Satan in the last days will try to wear out the saints of God. Why? So that you won't have enough energy to spend with your kids. You won't have enough energy to be a father. You won't have enough energy to be a mother. You won't have enough energy to say, hey, you guys, good morning. Dad's away. Hey, you guys, good night. Let's say a prayer before we go to sleep. Hey, boys, let's go in the room and let's read one chapter about God. Hey, you know what? Daughter's dad is here. You know, this is what a man is. You know what? Women, mothers, they need you. How many know they need us? You need us, huh? And you need dad, you need mom. We'll face you. But all these days, I've been watching the kids, man, and my heart's been breaking. I go, man, I, it's beautiful. So I tell you what, all the little innocent faces, how I many know they're beautiful, right? So we're going to just close. Pastor P, Pastor Pat, Pastor Fredo. We're just going to bow raise. You can just pray in God's blessing. And you guys, we need it. We'll, we'll pray. Father, we just come before you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this night, God. We thank you for who you are, Lord, and what you're doing in our lives, God, and in our church, God. And Father, right now, Lord, I pray over every father, God, every mother, God, every parent, God, every grandparent, Father. Pray, God, right now, Lord, for your guidance, God. God, we need your wisdom, God. Not our own wisdom, our own understanding, God, or how we think we should be leading our family, God. But Lord, we need to seek you, God. We need you to take us by the hand, God, as parents, God, as guardians, God, and teach us, God. Give us your heart, God, for our kids, God. Let us see, God, the things, God, that we may not even be seeing, God, that, Lord, you would reveal, that you would show us, God. Father, we need your strength, God, not our own understanding, God, our own strength, God, because, Lord, we'll fail, God. But, God, I pray right now, God, your hand, God, your protection, God, your guidance, God, over every parent, God, right now, Lord, God. Strengthen them, encourage them. Refresh them, God, even right now, Lord God, their hearts, their minds, yes. God. Father, let them know, God, that they're not failing, God. God, they're not failures, God, but Lord, you're with them, God, and you're guiding them, God. You're going to strengthen them, Father. And Lord, it's never too late to change, God. It's never too late, God, to seek your hand, God. It's never too late, God, to fall on our knees, God, and ask of you, God, to, to take the will, God, to take the lead, God. Father, I pray right now, supernatural strength, God, refreshing, God blessing God right now Lord that you God will begin to open up the, the gates of heaven God and pour out a blessing God over every parent God over every uncle every aunt every every grandparent God right now Lord God that Lord right now their arms may be weary God but Lord that you would come beside them God and lift their hands once again God that God that they can lift their hands God in strength and victory knowing God that God you are with them God that the victory is there as his parents, God. Help us, God. Forgive us, God. For maybe not even being, God, that parent that you've called us to be, God. Forgive us, God. We repent, God. And we ask, God, for more of you, Lord, and less of us. Father, we declare that in the mighty name of Jesus. And all that God's people say, amen. Hallelujah. Te alabamos, Señor, en esta noche. Espíritu Santo, ven y llena este lugar de tu presencia. Te pedimos que bendigas a cada familia que está aquí en este lugar, Señor. La sangre de Jesús cubra a cada hijo de nosotros como Padre, Señor. Danos sabiduría para guiar a estos niños, que son los niños de hoy, los niños que alaban al Señor, al Rey de Reyes y Señor de señores, Padre. Que tu sangre preciosa cubra siempre cada familia, Padre. Y que tú sigas guiando a tu iglesia, a tu pueblo, Señor. Que el maligno no los toque. Cuida a nuestros hijos en la escuela, donde quiera que ellos anden. Aléjalos de las malas compañías, Padre. Creemos que tú has puesto en este lugar, Señor, familias bendecidas, Señor. Familias temerosas de ti. Guía a cada padre, a cada madre, a cada abuelo, Señor, a ser ejemplo hacia los demás, Padre. Cubre a tu iglesia, Padre. En el nombre de Jesús, te damos muchas gracias, Padre. Amén y Amén. Father, we just...
praise you, God. We, we ask, God, that you just give us wisdom, God, in training our children, God. Father, God, that we would be a shield over our children, a shield to them, God, like you are our shield, Father, God, that we protect them, that, Father, God, that we would protect them from the lies of the enemy, God, that we would train them up, God, in righteousness, God, train them up in your ways, that, that we would be examples, God, uh, that we would be those examples to our children, Father, God, show us how to be those righteous examples, God, uh, Father, God, in the name of Jesus, God, uh, and, and Father, God, uh, even if they're in school, God, that you would just uh, quench all those fiery darts, God, Father, that you would give our, our children supernatural wisdom, God, and discernment. Even at a young age, God, that they would be able to discern what is good and what is right and what is pleasing in your eyes, God. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen. One more thing, you guys, one more thing. I think the guys going to have our one pastor, one sister, Marianne, sister Naomi, sister Brisa, and sister Jaja. I want you to say a prayer just from a, a mother's perspective. Say a prayer. We're going to say a prayer. Sister Naomi, and also sister Brisa, and also sister Father, I just thank you, God, for this opportunity, God, that as we're parents, I thank you, Father, that God, you've given us, God, this responsibility, God, to lead them, Lord, to you. I pray, God, that you continue, God, to raise them, Father, to be men and women of God, because they're raising up, God, in the kingdom. I pray that you instruct us, mothers, Lord, instruct us, God, as leaders over them, God, as watchmen, Lord. I just pray right now, God, continue to give us wisdom. We rebuke every lie of Satan, God, that will make us feel that we don't belong and we're bad parents. But I pray even right now, God, that you pour out a new spirit in us, God, a freshness, Lord God, that we will be, God, caretakers, God, of our homes. I thank you, Father, for these children, God, for entrusting us, Lord. Continue to bless them, strengthen them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. right now, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you will come and you will take over every family. God, we speak we speak life into every child, every father, every daughter. God, we pray, Father God, that you would just take care of everybody. Bring unity. When there's brokenness, you bring healing. You will mend your people, God. You are your people, God. You are your children, God. We pray that you will do miracles, Father God. You will build your child, Father God. In the name of Jesus, cover them with the blood of Jesus. Father, we just plead the blood over every child tonight in the name of Jesus. We bind depression, we bind the spirit of suicide, we bind every lie, we bind every strategy, every demonic attack in the name of Jesus. We speak life over our children. Father, I pray right now that you would use them for your glory and your honor, God. And I pray for healing upon those that are sick tonight in the name of Jesus, every child, God. And I just pray you would continue to give us wisdom, God. I pray you would continue to guide us, continue to show us how to be the best parents that we could be, God. Father, to raise them up in the things of you tonight, God, that we would continue, God, to lead them, God, and guide them and show them, God, your ways, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Venimos ante tu presencia, Señor, para poner a todos nuestros hijos en tus manos, Señor. Que donde quiera que ellos anden, tu presencia vaya con ellos, Señor. Que nos cubras con tu sangre preciosa, Señor. Te pedimos que a nuestros niños, Señor, los guardes, cuides lo que oyen, lo que ven, lo que hacen, por donde se conducen, Señor. Que mandes una barrera de ángeles alrededor de su escuela. Que como guerreros valientes no permitan que alguien irrumpa de manera violenta, Señor. Guárdalo, Señor, en cada momento, donde quiera que esté, Señor, sé tú con ellos, Señor. Y ellos verán sus simientes, Señor. Y ellos verán maravillas, Señor. Declaramos milagros sobrenaturales en nuestros hijos. Y los apartamos para ti, Señor. Para tu honra, para tu gloria, para tu reino, Señor. Cúbrelo, Señor, donde quiera que esté. Guárdalo, Señor, que todo lo que toquen prospere, Señor. Que prospere dentro de lo que hacen, dentro de sus escuelas, Señor. Que sean testimonio de hijos cristianos, de hijos que te alaban que te bendicen, que te adoran Señor, declaramos sobre todos ellos bendiciones sobrenaturales en el nombre de nuestro Señor Jesús, Amén one of us, we're praying for you guys, believing God for you, but we're going to say today that we serve an amazing God, and I hope today that as you go home, that you feel the power of the Holy Spirit upon your life today, so we want to say, have a great night, we're going to sing us, us, some songs, if any, just one song, how many, we appreciate all of our children tonight, man, let's give God thanks, amen, let's give God glory, and let's give God all the honor, man, thank you.
are singing and if we could all be dismissed today. Thank you so much.